Hello, I'm Mike. I'm with Smart Family of Cooling Products. And I'm gonna be talking a little, a little bit about multimeters and safety and the testing of uh, electrical circuits using multimeters. So there's a couple of different types of meters, but if you're out in the market for a meter, get a good one. Don't waste your time on cheap meters. They only get you hurt. And so typically if you get a fluke or some other uh, good quality meter, you're gonna be good. The, the meters that I have here, uh, this one right here is really nice for big wires when I wanna check amps and it clamps around the big wires like what you would see off of a, a generator or something like that. But it has a lot of features and this one tests AC volts and DC volts, which is really nice. And it comes with a lot of attachments like you can put an attachment on that's got a little clamp jaw and I like to use that myself. But then there's also a different style of meter. This is the T5-1000 made by Fluke. It's a really nice meter. I believe they have a, a more modern version of this now, but this is a very safe meter to use and it's really required by a lot of the uh, people that we do work for, like the petrochemical industry. So it has the leads that have a nice little storage place in the back. So, and what's really nice about this is you don't have to clamp it around a wire. It simply goes right up to it and around the wire to read amperage, which is really nice. But with reference to meters, safety should be your first and primary concern. So never do anything that's gonna put yourself in jeopardy. And so, with meters, I always like to test them first. If you have the ability to get on some kind of known power supply and check to verify that your meter's working properly, always do that first. And then you can use your meter to test live circuits. Secondly, you don't wanna use your meter. For example, I'm gonna stand up my meter so that I can see the display when I'm working. You don't wanna do this testing circuits with both hands. That's not a smart way to use a meter. What's better is if you set the meter to the voltage that you're looking for and put an attachment on your meter so that you can uh, very easily clamp it around the neutral or ground wire. And then from there, you can start testing circuits, watching your meter using one hand, not two hands. And you don't wanna have one hand on a grounded part of the metal. They always say, maybe if you could put one hand in your pocket, that way you're safer. You can go through and you can kind of work across the terminal strip watching your meter. And that way there's less of a chance of getting shocked if you accidentally get into something that you shouldn't be. So when you're, when, you're, when you're using a meter, you always want to check for power on a known circuit. In this case, on our units, we use red wire to indicate the control circuit voltage. Typically that's 115 volts. And so this would be the first thing in the, in the uh, electrical circuit to look at. So if I check the top of it, I'd expect that I got power coming from the transformer or the power source going to my meter. So I would expect it at the top of the single fault breaker and I'll look for it. And then if the breaker's turned on, I would expect it out of there. That's always the place to start when you're testing. From there, there's many devices throughout the system that can uh, stop the flow of electricity to the final uh, device, which is typically a compressor contactor or fan contactor or other device that would turn on a main component. And so when you're going through the circuit testing, that's what you're gonna do. Go to a known source, verify that you have the voltage. And then on our units, the number two is the neutral circuit or the ground. And it's labeled number two. So one side of your meter is gonna stay there. And then you're gonna start working it down the circuit, watching your meter for voltage. And as you do, you'll see, I have it there on three, I have it there on four. Oh, I don't have it on five. 
So then you can look at your schematic and see, okay, I'm following the circuit path and I see where four is and I see where five is, but I don't have it on five. So I can look at the schematic and I can identify what component that is that stop the flow of, of uh, electricity. Likely it's a switch or a, a, for example, a flow switch or a selector switch or something like that. That might be a safety device like a motor protection module. That might be a high pressure switch or a low pressure switch. That might even be an, an auxiliary contact. I don't see one here, but sometimes on the side of the breakers, we have an auxiliary contact on this style. It's in the face of it. And so if the breaker is turned off, the auxiliary circuit will be open and that will keep the flow of electricity from making its way down the circuit path to the end product, which might be the compressor contact or something like that. So those are some of the things that you can do with your meter. Above all, never put yourself in jeopardy. If it happens to be a high voltage circuit, which on our systems, we run black wire whenever it's a high voltage three phase circuit. And so typically we have plexiglass protective panels and a lot of uh, companies will require special protective gear to be worn if you're gonna, gonna be doing that. And so. I'm not going into that part of it right now, but I'm just talking about the control circuit and the testing and the use of the meter. And so once you're done verifying where the break of the circuit might be, through which device or through possibly even a loose connection, then it, you can turn off the power and you can dig into the problem, resolve the problem and restore power and see if everything will work. So these are some of the things that you should be looking for and there's a, a lot of good places to get good meters you can go on amazon you can go to granger a lot of people sell good meters but don't skip on your meter because it will save your life